and gentlemen, this is an eight-round affair in the super welterweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner with a professional record of nine wins, five losses, and no draws. Hailing from Thailand, this is Chai Wat Mung Pong! And his opponent out of the red corner with a professional record of 12 wins, no losses, and no draws. Hailing from Singapore, this is Abdelela Kaum! <laughs> Judges ringside, Peapot C. Sane, Bimai Po Suan, and Carlos Costas. Referee in charge of the action, Chris Sanya De. คู่ที่13วันนี้ครับพิกัดรุ่นซูเปอร์เวลเตอร์เวทครับอัปเดลเลาคารูมจากสิงคโปร์โอเค everybody we move on to fight number 13 now this is a six sorry eight round affair between อัปเดลเลาคารูม from Singapore taking on Chai Wat Mung Pong from Thailand that is the bell we're in round number one already Karoom with a nice fast start takes the lead already with a nice stiff jab to start the action we've got a classic orthodox against the southpaw and as you already know when you've got a southpaw against an orthodox it is a battle of the lead leg getting your lead leg on the outside of your opponent before you send that power shot down the middle now as we already know Abdella Karoom does have the box Thailand in his corner, the box Thailand in Bangkok, of course, one of the best professional boxing gyms in Thailand. So he's definitely got a good team behind him to win this fight. But of course, Ali, you know a little bit about his opponent, Chai Wat yeah. Mon Pong. Chai Wat, former Rajdamdan Muay Thai stadium champion, former friend of mine a couple of years ago. My friend was able to beat him on points, but really didn't give him an easy fight. A veteran of, it's got to be over 100, maybe over 200 fights for Chai Wat. And to my surprise, he's very handy at boxing too, Jimmy. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't start throwing any elbows, knees in this fight, but he's definitely been in this ring before. I've seen him fight several times before. And he knows how to weather storms. That's one thing about him. He does ha know how to weather storms. But I've seen him hit the canvas before. But he's a very good fighter indeed. Karoom throwing heavy leather in round one already. Big right hand hits the mark again for Karoom. Chai Wat doing a good job to stay on his feet. Karoom holds a nice high guard. Trying to bait his opponent in to go downstairs possibly so he can throw that lead hook upstairs. A very nice move by Karoom to hold a high guard next to his opponent to deliver those combinations inside the pocket. Uppercut being landed by Chai Wat. Left hand on the back foot from Chai Wat as well. And a double jab to the outside as he gets some more free space away from the onslaught of Karoom. So as you can see, he's landing some nice body shots downstairs. They might not look like they're hitting hard, but with his such a big frame, every shot he throws is connecting hard. So of course, Karoom just got to be careful. He doesn't allow his opponent to give him too many body shots. Like I said, Karoom is holding a high guard because he wants his opponent to go downstairs and he took the bit already but Karoom didn't give anything back. Chai Wat going to the body with that left straight and the right hook. If you give your body up, you've got to be able to have a counter in place for that and that lead hook or that lead right hand, it will definitely be the factor in this situation. At the moment, Karoom is almost boxing his opponent like he isn't a southpaw. He's almost boxing him like an orthodox. He needs to start stepping more to his left and throwing that right hand downstairs. But a good close round for both of these fighters, a nice round indeed. We're going to go to a second in just a moment after some action replays. But Ali, what did you make of that first round? I thought Karoom was definitely the aggressor and Chai Wat just trying to just be the more technical fighter on the outside, which we saw a lot of him in his Muay Thai days. He's a very good technical fighter and an excellent left body kick. Obviously, can't use it in this boxing bout, but 
really does have a lot of experience behind him, whether he's got... Let's see how long he can withstand Karoom's onslaught, because Karoom <laughs> is the aggressor, <laughs> as we know. Okay, here we go, coming into round two now. We are set for eight. So in the black trunks with the yellow trim, that's Chai Wat in the blue corner. And with the green trunks and the black and white trim, that is Karoom in the red corner. Karoom has been told, go downstairs with a right hook and follow up with a left uppercut or a right uppercut. And that would be a beautiful move. Go downstairs with that right hook and go upstairs with the uppercut. Chai Wat, like a Muay Thai fighter, has a very wide stance of his elbows. So those uppercuts would land clean. And that uppercut lands very well against the southpaw, goes to the chest. Don't aim for the chin, don't aim for the sternum, go to the chest of your opponent. Chai Wat doing very good right now, dancing around, doing what he needs to do. Uppercut to the body there from Karoom. Jab from Chai Wat. Double uppercut as well from the veteran. Nice combinations landed by Karoom, but Karoom needs to be a little bit more active. Chai Wat landed some nice combinations. Karoom needs to aim with that right hook to the chest. Chai Wat. Walking his way into the neutral corner, slipping and dipping some of Karim's punches. And interestingly, we've seen with the other fight, the fighter that comes forward tends to be favored in the judges' scorecard. So to me, Chai Wat is doing a fantastic job to counter as well, but he's on the back foot, which isn't going to be in the judges' favor. Karim just walking down Chai Wat. This must be, like you point out earlier on, he's not fighting. Chai Wat, like you should fight an orthodox fighter, he's fighting him more like he's sparring a southpaw, fighting a southpaw. Yeah, absolutely, because right now, we can see he's an orthodox against the southpaw. Karoom needs to start acting like his opponent is a southpaw and using that right hand down the middle, stepping on the outside and sending it through the middle. Chai Wat knows how to weather a storm. He knows how to last inside that ring. He knows how to take a big shot. Karoom is now coming alive with combinations, but a little bit gun shy because Chai Wat is just clubbering right now. Karoom still on the front foot. Left hook from Karoom. We're entering the 30 second mark now for round two. Karoom with the hook to the body and then right to the head. Chai Wat doing everything he needs to do. He's very long, he's very lengthy, and he's almost just swinging those hooks in. He's almost like a bazooka. He just starts going forward with these hooks. Karoom needs to be careful. He doesn't take too many body shots. It doesn't matter how conditioned you are. Body shots will wear and tear through the later rounds. Dying seconds of the round now, and that is it. That's the end of round two. The chest. Because right now, he's not boxing Chai Wat like a southpaw. He's boxing him like he's just a regular orthodox, and that's not the right strategy. But of course, I know that Abdullah Karoom is training with the Box Town, who is one of the best gyms in Thailand for professional boxing, so I'm sure they've got a method behind this. Okay, here we go, entering round three. It is... Singapore taking on Thailand. Abdallah Karoom in the red corner and Chai Wat. Mern Pong in the blue. And this combination there from Karoom. This is what Karoom needs to do. He needs to start piecing these combinations together. Chai Wat will throw a combination then take a break. Karoom just needs to go for it, give it what he's got, or use the jab to his ability. But this is where he needs to be. But he needs to be careful because Chai Wat is firing back. Chai Wat pushing Karoom away with his jab. Chai Wat doing a great job to battle fire with fire. And I think Chai Wat is the stronger fighter and he needs to start muscling his opponent. Maybe start clinching, maybe start pushing away a little bit more. Karoom needs to get behind the jab and deliver the right hand. 
I might sound like a broken record, Ali, but that's what he needs to do. He needs to fight his opponent like the opponent he is. He is a southpaw, and he is open to the right hand to the chest. I'd also like to see Karim go to the body as well. I just don't think Chai Wat is... Oh, great! Make him miss, make him pay right there. We saw that from Karim. And he's got Chai Wat backed up in the neutral corner. Big shots landed here by Karim at the moment. We've got a firefight, even when they're in the fire he starts fighting fire with fire Chaya what what a legend he is of a fighter but he did got hit with such a huge shot didn't go down and just fired right back that's exactly what you need to do I am impressed with the man Chaya what swing and a miss there from Karoom Karoom landing over the right hook Karoom just needs to get behind the jab more, start using that jab and set up his combinations. He's doing a good job of staying in the pocket and battling fire with fire because we know the judges are going to favor aggression, but he needs to have a better game plan going up against someone like Chai Wat. Right hand though, that catches Chai Wat and puts him off balance slightly. Looks like he was stunned by that shot, Jimmy, as Karoom's got him in the corner now, got him backed up onto the ropes. But we know this referee likes to allow fighters to carry on, so I don't think this is going to be enough. Chai Wat could actually just take a knee here if he needs to. We know Chaya Wat will never give up. We know he's a warrior. We've seen him fight several times before and he never gives up. Karoom. Great right hand lands there for Karoom. That just, that just shook the stadium. And that's where he needs to be. Stepping on the left hand side. Throwing that right hand. Now he's got the left foot on the outside and that's where the right hand lands clean. A better finish for the man from Singapore Karoom. Okay, here come the replays. It seemed like it was target practice or one-way traffic for Karoom. It was a very nice round by both fighters. I think Chayawat started off as the stronger fighter, but there was that moment where Karoom did not allow him to have any time to reset, and that's exactly what we needed to see. And a very nice move as well. Don't let your opponent reset. Just attack as soon as you possibly can. That's what fighters, the top fighters in the world do. They don't give you a chance to reset. They attack you as soon as they can. A very nice round by... Here we go. We move on into the next round. So Chai Wat using a lot of his experience from Muay Thai and also from boxing too. And Karoom just trying to weather the storm and push him back as much as he can. A lot of success from Karoom, like you said with some good right hands in the third round. Let's see how we do in the fourth. Well, as you know, Chaiwat's going to be used to three round and five round fights. Can he last an entire eight rounds of boxing? It will be definitely a test to him. Can he survive five rounds? We will see. Karoom is definitely the seasoned boxer. He can survive that many rounds. But look at the way Chaiwat comes alive with these hooks. Well, this is great to see. Chai Wat landing left straights at will and taking the fight to Karoom and in the side the pocket right now just trying to gunsling Jimmy. It looks like Karoom just shells up and allows Chai Wat to tee off on him but look at the shoulders of Karoom. He's taking shots, he's taking uppercuts. You cannot allow your opponent just to tee off on you because Chai Wat clearly isn't tiring. Even these shots that look slow are still getting through. Jab there from Karoom. Chai Wat just pushing him back here. Great tactic, tactic here from Chai Wat. It's good that we're seeing it now in the midpoint of the fight. Beautiful stuff by Chai Wat. He's just digging down deep, going to the body, making it a dogfight. Look, Karoom, in a boxing sense, is more technically sound, but Chai Wat is definitely just taking the fight to him. Karoom isn't even throwing double jabs. He's throwing single punch combinations, which isn't the right tactic. And this pace is starting to tire Karoom or at least suffocate him a bit. He's not able to find any separation or any range for his own punches. He's finding it very difficult at the moment, Jimmy. You can just see how awkward it is for him. I think you read that perfectly. He's not finding the range for his punches. A beautiful double uppercut as we say it. So rather than finding a range, he just turned it into a short punch. But 
you're right, he needs to step back and throw his punches. Karim going to the body, but Chai Wap walking him down again, slinging that left hand. Both fighters breathing heavily, both fighters with their mouths open, that which is a good sign that they're both very tired. And the more tired you are, the harder the shots will hit. Right hand connects there for Karoom. Uppercuts from Chai Wat. Less than 30 seconds to go, but is Chai Wat going to be able to finish strong? Like we said, we know the judges like this style of boxing. Karoom, can Karoom survive eight rounds of going to the body like this? Because all of these shots are just a wear and tear, puncturing the tire as they speak in Thailand. Jab there from Karoom, nine seconds in the round. And that is going to be it for round four. We'll get the replays for you and then we will see you soon in round five. A great round by both fighters, but a very close round indeed. We're going to see some of these action replays. So on the inside, Karoom is just turtling up and then waiting for the counters in between the shots, which is a very nice move. If you can find timing, you can land it. And we saw that double uppercut as well. That landed for Karoom, but Chai Wat to me is having more success on the inside. It looks like the shots he's landing just look a little bit more vicious in my view. They look like they're clubbing his opponent a lot better. But then there was that beautiful combination landed by Karoom. A very even fight at the moment, a little bit being tested right now. Okay, here we go. Round five on the way. It's Chai Wat from Thailand in the blue corner and it's Abdallah Karoom in the red corner. I gotta say, I'm surprised that Chai Wat came alive like he did in the previous round, Jimmy. Let's hope we see more of that. I think Chai Wat found some confidence. I think he realized he's going up against a guy who's 12 and her, but he's still in there. He's still in this fight and it must be good for his confidence. But as we say, he eats a right hand in the process. And this tactic here can't be doing Karoom's confidence a world of good. As Chai Wat just keeps on pushing him back, Karoom is not having to fight his way at all. The worst feeling is you hit someone as hard as you possibly can and they're still in front of you. It's like fighting in a dream. It doesn't matter what you do, they're still there. It's a nightmare in front of you. But Karoom now doing what he needs to do. He needs to find some gaps. He needs to find a bridge to start delivering those shots. Great right hand there connects for Karoom, but Chai Wat just shaking it off. And the left! Straight to the body. Now Karoom looked like he that really hurt him and Chai Wat is going for him right, right now with more shots to the body and to the head. And another clubbing left hand as well. So both fighters giving it everything they've got. A very nice fight, a very action-packed fight. And this is definitely a test on Karoom's career because he is against a seasoned boxing professional. Now Karoom going with his own body work. And Chai Wat trying to cause some separation, getting pushed away from Karoom. Again with Chai Wat going to the body once more. This is great to see from Chai Wat again coming alive in round five. Yeah, this is just exactly what Chai Wat needs to do. He's not going to outbox his opponent. He's not going to be able to outbox him or anything like that. But what he can do is he can tire him out. He can dig down to the body and just really try and take his opponent out with good body shots. So I like this from Chai Wat, but it looks like Karoom is also finding timing in between. And that's how you beat someone who smothers you. You find timing in between the combinations. But also... It just looks like Karoom is running out of ideas and really struggling to fend off Chai Wat. It's been a very difficult last two rounds for him and this tactic from Chai Wat, I mean, he's just alarm bell, uh, not an alarm bell, sorry, a light bulb moment in his head where he just decided to come forward earlier on and just take the fight to him. Yeah, like one of my favorite boxers, Bryce Lee, it doesn't matter how much you get hit, he just keeps coming forward. You can hit him with your hardest shot and he'll keep coming forward. But it looks like Chai Wat is now taking too many big shots and he's got to be very careful. Chai Wat is taking too many haymakers and Karoom is starting to find his combinations. Yeah, Chai Wat looked like he wobbled slightly there. There's the clapper for 10 seconds left in the round. Chai Wat going to the body with the left straight. Chai Wat starting to tee off, but I think Karoom may have taken that fight towards 
And we're going to see in just a moment some of the action replays. So here it is as well. We see that big right hand that just misses the target ever so slightly. It was that right hand that found its way through, of course. But to me, Chaiwa in the early stage of that round was winning. But then eventually Karum does what Karum does best. He weathers the storm and then starts finding the shots in between the big combinations of Chaiwa. So to me, Karum stole that round away from Chaiwa. What do you think, Ali? Oh. T to be honest, Jimmy, I'm going to come here to win that round on my own official scorecard, that is. Interesting to hear, and I like to hear it because I love a good body puncher. I love a southpaw, and I love a good southpaw body puncher. And I would like to see someone like that get favored on the judges' scorecards. I agree with you. Okay, here we go. So we move into round six. We have two more to go after this. A bit of a... Slower start for both of these fighters. Finally, a jab being thrown by Karun, and Karun needs to double that jab up and then throw that right hand behind it. Maybe Chaiwa is a little bit tired. He did give it everything he got, but he finds a left hand in the middle. Left straight there for Chaiwa. You've got to wonder, when is he going to start pushing Karun back like he did in the previous two rounds? It's hard to say. We're already past that five-round mark, Ali. Chaiwa is used to five round and three round Muay Thai. So this is probably the late stages for Chaiwa. Is he in now in the deeper waters? Can he survive these later rounds? Chaiwa. Good jab from him on the outside. The veteran, former Rajnamdan Stadium champion. Fought the who's who in Muay Thai. Going to the body there with a straight left, but good left hook. An uppercut there from Karoom. Karoom's starting to put these pieces together, and that's where he needs to be. He needs to just basically believe in himself. Look at the red marks on Karoom's body. He's taken so much damage in this fight, but he's starting to find the combinations in between the combinations of Chaiwa, and that's where he needs to be. But is it enough to put this legend down? Chai Wat playing possum on the back foot, on the ropes. Left hand goes through the guard for Chai Wat, taking his time, really landing some great shots here. I'd like to see him just put his foot on the gas again and just walk Karoom down like we saw earlier on. And we're seeing Karoom starting to just put pieces together, starting to find his timing. And you can tell that Karoom is very well seasoned and conditioned for this fight because he's taken so much damage. He's taken so many shots, yet he's still coming forward and finding openings. So that is a testament to the fitness level of Karoom. Really, you could just see Chai Wat just jabbing to the head and then going straight to the body. He's had so much success to the body, Jimmy. See that left straight again going straight to the body from Chai Wat to Karoom. I mean, it didn't land with a lot of power, but still it landed, though. Good right hands here, and Karoom has Chai Wat cornered on the ropes. Chai Wat gets the clinch, and that's what he should be doing. But every time Chai Wat lands a big left hand downstairs, it seems to stop Karoom in his tracks. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Both fighters seem to be just giving it everything they've got. Karoom, to me, is starting to pick up the pace and starting to just edge a little bit more to Chai Wat. Chai Wat seems to be slowing down. Karoom starts to pick it up in between the combinations. Chai Wat with a double jab. As he moves laterally to his right, Karoom. And Chai Wat gets the last laugh, landing the last punch before the end of the round. Replay's coming to you shortly, and then we'll have round seven. Some nice action in this round. Karoom starting to use his jab finally in this fight, using the jab to the best of his ability, starting to find openings and really piece his combinations together. It is really difficult to hit somebody with everything you've got, but they're still in front of you. Like I said, it's like fighting in a dream, and that is what Chaiwa is. Chaiwa is an absolute legend in the Muay Thai world. So, Ali, considering he's a Muay Thai fighter, what kind of Muay Thai fighter was he? Was he a Muay Fema? He Muay was a Ka Fema. A Chai beautiful Wat. round there so far, Ali, and a great fight indeed. And we're going into another round just now. A nice stiff double jab already, and he's now signed to triple up, and maybe 
he started to realize that that jab is exactly what he needed to throw from the beginning. A jab will always help you out massively inside a fight against a southpaw like this. Straight left to the body again from Chai Wat. That's been his money shot so far in this fight. It's worked so well, and he keeps going back to it. Chai Wat starting to just slow down. I'd like to, for someone to just tell him, you've got to go for it now. The fight is a lot closer than you possibly think. And if you can pull off an upset against somebody such as this, then you're in a situation right now where you just got to give it everything you've got. Left hand to the head there from Chai Wat, trying to push Karim away. Again from Chai Wat, going to the body, going on the front foot now, being backed up again by Karim. He really stabs that left hand downstairs, and a whipping left hook landed as well by Karim. So Karim, even though he has taken so many shots, he's still very accurate and very sharp with his shots. As much as I'm a fan of Chai Wat, Jimmy, I'm starting to see him fade a bit in this round. Not as much power as Karoom, and Karoom's got him where he wants him, on the ropes. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing someone who is mainly a boxer against someone who is a Muay Thai fighter turned boxer. He can weather a storm, but Karoom has weathered the correct version of the storm and has found his openings in between. And it looks like he's starting to fade, like you said, Chai Wat has definitely met his match with Karoom. And maybe this is why Karoom is 12 and uh. He just survives and he gets through you. Good shot to the body there from Chai Wat. Going at it again. Karoom pushing him away. Chai Wat in on the ropes. That's not where he wants to be. Karoom keeping him there with the straight rights. But Chai Wat fighting fire with fire. Pushing him away. Almost looked like a Muay Thai clinch there from Chai Wat. And we're starting to see the double jabs nearly land but i think it's a little bit too late i think he should have done this in the early rounds as well but either way i think karoom is starting to edge this fight in his favor what was a close fight i think karoom is just slowly but surely it's kind of like that classic race between the fox and the hare the hare slowly but surely starts to win the race and that's what we're seeing right now he's just marching towards you Chai Wat was the nightmare, and now Karoom has turned into the nightmare. Chai Wat on the front foot. Sorry, Karoom on the front foot now. Chai Wat going to the body. And that is going to be the end of the round. So we will get the replays coming up for you right now. It's a much better round from Karoom. That was the second to last round as we head into round number eight. So for me, I think this is quite even, but I'm edging towards Karoom now, just based on the last couple of rounds. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I mean, I thought Chai Wat started off so well. The first three to four rounds, Chai Wat was doing so well, but I think he started to fade. And I think Karoom maybe realized that if he weathers this storm long enough, he'll be able to edge towards his opponent and start winning this fight. And that's exactly what he's done. A great fight so far, and like I said, Karoom has done really well to last this long because those body shots by Chai Wat have been damaging, but it's been exciting, and I like to see how Karoom has shown everybody it doesn't matter what is happening, you can always find a tactic to win the fight, and that's what we're seeing right now. Okay, here we go. Eighth and final round coming up. This is our 13th fight on the card. We've got two more to go after this. Got Mikel Arujunian returning to Highland Boxing Promotions, and then we have a title fight in our main event. Can't wait for that one. Yeah, I'm excited for our main event. It's coming up very soon. Two more fights to go, but let's not sleep on this fight because this one has been a great one as well. Eight rounds of pure action. It's been inside boxing. The best boxing you can last for is this type of stuff here. And are we gonna see Chai Wat come alive? Does Chai Wat think he's winning? Does he think he's losing? He's got to do something different. Well, it's just like you said, Muay Thai fighter turned boxer. Just taking it too easy in the later rounds. Which is probably going to go against him, Jimmy. I mean, I'm surprised that 
he's had the he's been able to stand up for for so long he's taken a lot of heavy shots shown an incredible amount of heart and toughness and grit yeah one thing about thai people in general especially muay thai fighters are their heart is unmatched they will not just give up and that's why we are seeing chai Wat be so active but this round so far is very close chai Wat doing what he needs to do to survive but again Karun has been up in his grill and he's not taken a back foot even though he's taking damage on the in the process he's still in there with the man chai Wat. Straight left to the body again from Chai Wat. Double jab as well as he just moves laterally to the outside. I'd like to see Chai Wat just really piece everything he's got, but maybe we'll see it in the final moments of the round. But Karum landing some great shots. If you're still accurate in the late rounds, that is just showing how conditioned you are and how well trained you are. Even in the heat of battle, even when you're really tired, you still land combinations. Body shots and hooks to the head here from Karum. I mean, you've got to think, what have he, has he got to do to score a knockdown or to knock out Chai Wat, who's just got a chin of steel at the moment? Both fighters just giving it everything they've got. One thing you can say is you left it all on the line. You didn't just leave it to chance. You did what you could. Chai Wat taking big shots. And Chai Wat, to me, is doing just enough to keep the referee away from him because at the moment he has taken too many big shots for my liking. It is, but the thing is, Ali, the fight is so close. I think the referee wouldn't want to stop in such a close situation either. Yeah, 100%, Jimmy. So, if this fight was more leaning towards the other opponent, the referee might have been stepping in in that moment. But because it's so close, I don't think you can. Ten seconds, Ali. One, two, five by Chai Wat. Landing with the left. Karoom trying to land the left hook. And that's it. That's all she rode for this fight. And we went the distance. Let's see what the how, which way the judges have scored. After eight rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge number one scores this 77-75, judge number two 79-75, and judge number three 78-74. For a unanimous decision, the red corner!